Hey guys, it's Turnro here, bringing you another Warcraft 3 World Editor tutorial. In today's topic, we'll be covering how to allow heroes or a hero to enter a circle of power and perform a summon animation for a period of time. Uh, this scenario can be useful in the situation where you want to create a timer where the player has to defend a hero for a certain amount of time to bring down a magical barrier or create a path or something similar. So the very first thing we're going to do is we are going to create the circle of power. So in the unit panel, it can be a bit confusing where to find it. You have to go into neutral passive and then you need to select campaign. And then you have a choice between a small, medium, or large size circle of power. For this one, we'll just choose a normal size. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a region so that we can detect in game whether or not Furion has entered the circle of power. Um, if you want to create a new entire region, you just make sure that this box is green and then you simply left click on the mouse on the map and just drag. But because we already have a region, we don't need to do that. The other thing we need to do is we need to create a series of variables within the triggers. So we'll be making use of obviously the timer. So this is the length of time that the player will be defending Furion. And we choose timer. Now we'll be creating another timer variable, which is where it specifies the duration of Furion's summon animation, which I will explain once we get to creating his particular trigger. So I'll just create the timer for the time being. The final variable we need to create is what's called a timer window, uh, which is essentially a box that appears on the interface in the game that allows the player to see how many minutes and seconds are remaining for them to defend the hero. So we'll call it timer window and we set the variable type to timer window. Now for those of you who are not used to what variables are, they're simply containers that allow us to specify different parts within the actual triggers. So we create a variable for a timer because we want to be able to reference that timer within different parts of the triggers. If we don't do this, then there's no way for us to actually refer to the timer once it's been created. So we click on OK. Now we have a default initialization trigger, which we don't need, so we can delete it. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new trigger and we're going to call it summon start and for this particular scenario we're going to trigger the summon once Furion enters the circle of power region so we go unit a unit enters region we click on ok in the conditions we want to make sure that the actual unit is the unit we want so we'll just do a condition we'll do a unit comparison if the entering unit is equal to Furion, otherwise we can just select a unit and select him on the actual map itself. So once we have that, now we can actually start the actual actions. The first action we need to do is we go T for trigger and we turn it off, just so this trigger doesn't occur more than once. The next thing we need to do is we need to go over to U for units and we scroll down to pause. So while Furion is within the actual circle of power, we don't want him to be controlled by the player. So we pause him. In addition to that, we want to move Furion directly within the middle of the circle of power. Um, so we'll just go ahead and do a unit, move unit, we'll move Furion instantly to the middle of the circle of power region. So now that we've got Furion positioned, we can now start the actual timer. So we go over into actions, we go to C for countdown timer. We'll go start timer. We create 
the first timer as a one shot that expires within how many seconds you want. So if you want it to be five minutes, for example, there's 300 seconds within five minutes. So you would have that as 300 seconds. Or if you want it to be three minutes, it would be 180 seconds. But for this demonstration, we'll just keep it short. So it will be about 10 seconds that we'll do it for. The next thing we need to do is we need to create the timer window. So we go into actions, we go countdown timer again, and then we go create timer window. We'll create a timer window displaying the amount of seconds remaining for the main timer. And the title, we'll call it time remaining. Since in the normal Warcraft 3 campaigns, this is the title that is used whenever you have a timer. After you've done that, then we need to assign this timer window to the timer window variable we've created. So we go set timer window to the last created timer window. Now we don't need to do this step for timers because timer variables already exist in the game. And so we can just immediately start referring to it. What we're now going to do is we're going to make it so that while Furion is within the circle of power, he performs a spell animation of some kind. So we're going to create another trigger. We're going to call it summon animation. And within this trigger, we're going to create an action where we go to A for animations and we go play Furion's spell animation. Now in regards to this spell text, this may vary depending on the actual model of the hero, but it will be along the lines of spell, spell slam, spell channel, etc. If you want to know more about the different animations a unit has, then you can simply click on the unit within the actual world editor and you can toggle between the different animations that the model has as well as their name. So moving on, the next thing we want to do is we want to create a special effect around Malfurion while he's playing his spell animation. So we go into actions, we go to S for special effects, scroll down, we create a special effect on the origin of Furion. And then here we can select a special effect, either one that exists in game or one that we have imported through the import manager of the map. But in this particular scenario, I will be choosing the charm spell animation. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to go into special effects again and go destroy last created special effect. Now, how Warcraft 3 works is that each time a special effect is created in the map, it stays there. And it, if there are a lot of them in the map over a long period of time, uh, it creates what's called memory leaks, which is a major cause of map lag and map crashes. So each time you create a special effect within the triggers, you need to eventually destroy it. Now, what this will do uh, is it will play the animation and then it will immediately destroy the animation once it's finished playing. Now, depending on the animation, uh, if it's a channel animation, such as Tranquility, if you run this destroy last created special effect after you created it, the animation won't play. Uh, in that case, what you'll need to do is you will need to create a variable and assign it as a special effect variable. And you will need to, instead of running this, you will need to set the variable to that special effect and then destroy the special effect eventually down the road. Once we have the special effect running, we can now go ahead and create the summon timer, which is the amount of time we expect Furion to be casting his spell before doing it again. So we go into C for countdown timer, 
We go start, timer summon as a one shot that will expire in 2.67 seconds, which is roughly the time he spends doing his spell animation, which it will display within the actual interface. What we want to happen is we want Furion to repeat this spell animation once the timer expires. So we're going to create a new trigger. We're going to call it summon timer end. We're going to create an event. We're going to go when timer expires, the summon timer. Then we run, we go to trigger, go run, summon animation. And in addition to this, in the initial trigger we created where Furion enters the region, we want the summon animation to play straight away. So the summon animation trigger will run, which will make Furion cast his summon animation as well as create a special effect. It will create a timer to specify how long he will be doing this summon animation. And then once it expires, it repeats. The last trigger we need to create is when the actual main timer expires. So once the timer duration ends, we'll create a new trigger. We'll call it summon end. So when the main timer expires, the first thing we'll do is we will go down to countdown timer and we will pause the summon animation timer just so Furion doesn't continue performing the summon animation. Next, we will remove the timer window from the game's interface, which we can do so by going down to countdown timer and destroy timer window. Next, we will unpause Furion since the hero uh, is no longer summoning and so can be controlled by the player once again. We go unpause Furion. And then if he is in the middle of an animation, we can go down to animation and reset his uh, animation to default. Now, there are a couple of other things we can do to make the timer the end timer more obvious to the player. So a couple of things we can do is we can remove the circle of power from the game. So go down to unit, we go remove, and we select the circle of power. And we can also play a sound uh, to make it more obvious as well. So we go into the sound editor within the world editor. And as you can see, I have a sound that is already within the game. Uh, you can access these sounds by simply going through the folders and if you find the particular sound you want, you just right click on it and go use a sound. If you want to know what it sounds like, you can make use of the play and stop buttons, um, etc. So once we have the sound, we can go back into the trigger editor and then we can go into actions, go to S for sound and we play the good job sound on Furion. That pretty much covers all the main triggers we need to do. So once Furion enters the region or the circle of power, a timer will start and he'll begin casting his animation that will continuously happen until the main timer expires, in which case the circle of power will disappear, Malfurion will appear as normal and a sound will play. So we'll go ahead and save our progress and we can test this within the actual game by making use of the test map icon or by going into Warcraft 3 itself uh, normally. And then as you can see, we order Malfurion to enter the circle of power and he'll begin casting his uh, summon animation. And once the timer expires, the circle of power will disappear and everything will return as normal. 
And so that essentially concludes how to allow heroes to enter a circle of power and begin summoning. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, feel free to like the video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And there will be plenty of more tutorial videos on World Editor coming out in the future. But for now, I'll catch you all next time. Bye now.